Greetings, salutations to our nation. I am Supercar Kid here, and I am here with the weekend vlog. Saturday, also, by the way, it's nighttime. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Saturdays I work till five, and then I get back, and then my dad asks me to do stuff, plus other stuff that I gotta do, and then I don't start working on car stuff until like mm, seven to eight o'clock. So it's already dark out, and I'm probably gonna be up late, but that's okay. So what I've been doing out here, uh, yesterday our dilemma was that I couldn't find anything to turn the wheel bearing like bolt thing. So that kind of sucked. And plus the Harbor Freight kit, which is that one over there, it's sitting under the car right now, um, didn't have the proper size stuff. I didn't have the right size things, the, the things I needed. So today I had to go basically rent another kit. So. The kit I got was from AutoZone. This has much more like varying sizes. So both of these are rented. I mean, I had to buy them and then I'm going to return them and I have the receipts in my wallet. Make sure you keep your receipts. But uh, yeah, these smaller ones, that other kit d did not have. So th this has these, these are what we're gonna use. Like this one and like this one maybe. Like these two, I think. Or maybe this one, I'm not sure. And then we're gonna use this thing. We're gonna use this and just hammer them in pretty much just hammer them like, directly in because uh, we got to be gentle now we got to not go from the middle like right away we got to like go like around the edge for a while and then we'll go in the middle at the very end oh yeah I already did one side so this is the one side I did um, and nice and it spins nice and free uh, I, think, I think I did a pretty good job I'm like shaking it and I don't feel anything so that's fantastic uh, th thankfully I found all the bolts. The only thing is, is the other side doesn't have this dust cap right here, which prevents stuff from getting in there. And, uh, now there's a washer, there's a spindle nut or a tainer clip and a cotter pin that will all keep everything together. So this dust cap doesn't do anything for keeping this all together. It just prevents it from getting crap in it. So I'll try to find another one of these dust caps pretty soon. Um, if anyone has one out there, please let me know. Please send one your boy's way. But it's not a big deal for now, and we can send it for now, so it's okay. I'm gonna bring some grease with me, and I'm gonna check up on this thing every like every stop we make, and like see how the grease is doing, see if the grease is oozing out, you know, see what's going on with that. Shouldn't be oozing out with the washer there, but it might ooze, ooze out a little bit. So this side's done. I gotta now do that one over there. So the races are already punched out. Um, they were right here. If you guys saw the last video, you, you saw me punch out those races. And if you didn't see the last video, watch the last video. What are you doing? What, what are you doing, man? Watch the last video, I'm telling you. But yeah, so the races. We punched out the races. Yeah, so the front one uh, goes in there. And uh, it is no longer there. I'm going to start from this side and clean out all the old nasty grease. And then we're going to put our new races in. All right, so I kind of made a boo-boo and like and like marked up the the race like seat like the area where the race is gonna sit in there and it's kind of bad so I got my Dremel here and I'm gonna just like zzz, 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 that away and then uh, wipe everything down and make sure there's no metal shavings inside of this thing then we'll get started on this then we'll get started on this. Before we put these races in, we're going to put a little bit of anti-seas in the, uh, the, the race seat. I'm just going to call this the race seat, the area where the race sits. The race seat, right? That makes sense, right? I'm going to flip this over. Do the other side. And now that I got myself a nice seat, oh my god. Here's our races, nice and frozen. I put these in the freezer because what that does is it makes the metal contract and makes it shrink just a little, little bit. The tolerance on these things is very low, so just that little bit can do a lot for you. It can make putting these things in a lot easier. So we're gonna grab this one. Yeah, that one works. We're gonna do it this way though. I'm gonna use this thing and we're just gonna give it light taps around the way. As the wheel bearing starts getting deeper and deeper, you wanna start like going harder and harder. Like as it gets deeper and deeper in there. 
you guys can see there's like the bottom where where the race is supposed to sit and there's the oh gosh and there's the race so make sure that that is reaching all the way to the bottom what i was doing to test it was i used my my fingernail and i was like trying to dig my fingernail in between like the gap inside of there and if it like could get through then it was probably not seated all the way um even still it could be not seated all the way so when you to so do that like fingernail test like test it all the way around if you have fingernails i guess and um, once you add that seal all the way around, give it a few more hits and then you'll be good. Well, that sounds like we've made it all the way to the bottom. Because once the, so now I'm putting this inside of here and we're gonna hammer this down really hard. Okay, testing with my fingernail. Cannot feel any openings. So that means that our front race is already done. That was it. I mean, I'll, I'll give it a few more just to be safe. But that should be in. That should be good. So now we'll flip it over, go grab the other race, and do the rear one. The rear race is a lot larger, and it could bind up a lot more easily. So you just got to be careful, really. And that's really about it. <laughs> there we go. That one in there nice and easy. Believe that's in. Believe that race is all the way in. So next is lubrication. We're going to be packing up our wheel hub with grease. Get a glove. You're gonna need a whole, I mean I have a whole uh, I have a whole box of gloves. Just freaking dip your hand in there, get a nice scoop of Rooney, and just freaking yep. Just, just put it all up in there. We can spin it around a little bit. Get all this, all that grease. It's all good. It's healthy. Makes the wheel bearings nice and happy having all this grease in here. I'm very, very happy. It's okay to get grease on your races. You'll be getting grease on them later on anyway. Basically, your rear wheel bearing, that's your larger one. I, crap, ugh, shite, okay. Um, I'm gonna try to open this with one hand if I can. Yeah. Oh, that worked. That actually, that actually kinda works. All right, so take this, what? Got my hand covered in grease. Here's my grease. We're just gonna freaking, yup, throw it on in there. Just throw, just throw the whole thing. Just throw the whole thing, get it covered, really covered, like absolutely covered. The race is tapered, as you'll notice, and so is this wheel bearing. You gotta make them match up, you know, not nice and simple. It's not gonna sit very flat right now, but just you wait. Now we're gonna grab our outer bearing seal, which is this rubber ring that comes in your bearing kit. And you want this side, the side with the groove in it, to be facing the center of the wheel hub. So you want the flat side to be facing you. So once again, get grease, grease it on up, nice and greasy, nice and greasy. Get it decently, you know, in a nice spot. Uh, don't use your bearing press kit for this next part because you don't need to. Um, use the punch kit, tap in this uh, bearing seal here. So now I'm gonna take off this nasty glove my hands nice and dry that's a weird feeling that's a weird feeling like taking off a glove after having like a bunch of goop on the glove but none of it's on your hand and you're just like oh what take this and we're gonna give it some nice tapper oh gosh nice tapper all along the outside here i think i had to sit this better with my hand yeah just push it in a little bit oh my gosh oh oh boy we're losing it okay. now i got that set in there a little bit more Got my hammer back out, there we go, now it's... That seal is now in, nice and tight. It's actually now time to go put the, the hub back onto the spindle. If you're wondering why my brakes look so horrible, why do, why do these rotors look like absolute crap? Well, for one, I put them in this rust bath, like water rust prevention stuff, maybe it was supposed to put water in it, I don't know. But um, yeah, they kind of came out looking gross and didn't really get the rust off. <laughs> 
because it is kind of grosser. I'm hoping that by using the brakes that it'll just take all this stuff off, and it should. But right after H2O, we're changing the brakes. Like, that's the first thing that we're doing is right after H2O. We're getting a uh, new uh, a front brake inversion. We're doing the, the Toyota uh, 4Runner brake swap. And then in the rear, we're going to do some kind of brake something eventually. Warning. The next part of this video could get erotic. So you want to take your grease and get a whole glob of that and just freaking smack it on there. If you think that's enough grease, ha, you would be mistaken, sir. More grease. More. More. Grease. Get it greasy. Greasy, greasy, greasy. Super greasy. It's so greasy, I don't even know. That's all greased up. Now we're gonna grab our wheel hub and try to put it on here. So I'm gonna take this glove off, and that is another glove that I will be throwing away. Get that nice and tight. You should feel kind of a squeeze back there. Then you wanna grab your front wheel bearing. All right, got this right here. I'm gonna need another glove, because we gotta grease this up and put it like this way on there. So once again, you pretty much want to just take your bearing and just kind of like, yup, move it all around in there, get it nice and, nice and greased up, nice and, nice and greasy, oh yeah, I'm feeling real greasy, get a little bit more on there, ooh, there we go, that looks really happy, that looks real happy, so we're gonna take this now, we're gonna go whoop, over top of this, and then it's good, it might give you a little resistance, but it's okay, just make sure you goes all the way in, just like that. Get more grease in there, more grease. Wipe it around a little bit. Now, this little washer, I just washed it. Uh, <laughs> I washed my washer, put that over there. There's a little groove in it that's gotta follow the thing. Push it in, that's gonna make a bunch of stuff ooze out. Fantastic. Then we have our spindle nuts, our spindle nut goes on the spindle as such. Now I'm gonna show you guys what you do with this spindle nut to tighten everything inside the wheel hub here. Another glove bites the dust. Now this spindle nut is a 26 millimeter. So I have just a crescent wrench here and this is fine. Get it around the bolt. What I'm gonna do is basically just spin this. So, so this spins freely now. I'm gonna tighten up the bolt a little bit. A little bit tighter, keep spinning it while you're tightening it. Spin it around, loosen it up, then tighten it again while spinning it. Then loosen her back up again. When you're finally done, you're just gonna get this nut just barely tight. Like not like not like really tight, but like just like here here's finger loose. Basically right after finger loose. The hole for the cotter pins right in the groove where the washer slid over top of. So that's actually it. That's all we had to do. Uh, again, yeah, there's no dust cap for this. So I'm going to be getting one as soon as I can or something to cover this up. I wish I got one before, but I didn't know that we were missing this until like a little while ago. And it's kind of too late to order parts before H2O because from when I'm doing this, H2O is in a week. One week. And also, I'm completely broke at this point, so I can't even afford a dust cap. Alright, boys, now I just gotta reinstall the brake. So, let me show you guys what happened to the brakes. So, I tried to put in this rust dissolver stuff. It was like water and this rust dissolver. And it kind of just made it look like this. Like, I let it sit in there for like a while. <laughs> like a long while. Like, 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 like a couple days. And it just kind of turned like this greenish hue. The other one's not uh, too bad. It's like a little bit better, but this one's like eesh. But uh, I thought to myself, you know, I could try to like wire brush these or I could try to like prime them or just like spray them in like gray or something. And then I thought, or the theme of this car is kind of like, it's, it's kind of rat rod. Like it, it's kind of rat rod. Like it, this is not a rat rod or anything really on that scale. 
but it's, you know, an old rusty car, so it should have old rusty brakes, shouldn't it, right? Like, yeah, it shouldn't have brand new brakes on, on an old rusty car. I mean, we want brand new brakes on the old rusty car, but those are gonna replace these. <laughs> like, we're getting those later. So maybe we'll run old rusty nasty brakes for now, and maybe that'll make us appreciate our brand new, sh nice, shiny, I don't know what color yet, brakes um later so this one has the the huge line on it because that was the only one that came off was the one over here so uh that one stripped and that one stripped so we're gonna also be replacing like actually we'll be be replacing all of this one day all of this whole this whole area here all depends on how broke we are really so now we got to prepare our brake caliper i'm gonna slide these in real nice and easy now Boys, I can't believe I'm finally saying this. I'm so tired, it's like 1 a.m. or something, I don't even know, but I can't believe I'm finally saying this. The dots and the wheels are together. Like, the wheels are on, tightened, mostly, spinning. Uh, I can't bleed the brakes just myself, so I have to wait till Hunter gets here tomorrow to bleed the brakes. And I also only tightened up the suspension. I only tightened up the coilover on the passenger side not on the driver's side uh because i already did the driver's side and then i didn't think about it till i got to the passenger side so yay this thing already looks sick so i'm gonna lower it down and we're gonna see what it looks like all right guys so here's my prediction i predict that this side might just be lower because the the spring has no preload in it whereas that side has a lot of preload like i spun the thing like 10 times so that side will have maybe like an inch or so gap Whereas this side will be like little to no gap, maybe a s small, small gap. But uh, Jack's under there, so. Oh, the back end just went down a lot. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get to the other side now. We'll see this thing at all four for the first time. For the first time, lowered on all four. Holy crap, this thing is already so low. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is cool. I think this is kind of perfect. I mean, I gotta tighten up the spring still, but this is like, it's not tucking in, but it's right where I think it should be. But damn, the Datsun is squatting. <laughs> Let's check the exhaust. Wow, that is a whole like, Two inches off the ground, that's awesome. This thing's menacing. This thing is sick. This thing is really sick. Oh, snap. All right. Whew. All right, I'm gonna just stand here and just bask in this for a while. But um, that's about all I got for tonight. So now I'm gonna cut to tomorrow where I'll be doing whatever the hell I'm doing tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow. And it's back in the air. <laughs> Everything is back together. Everything's ready to go. Well, mostly. I'm gonna fix a couple things before we start bleeding the brakes. Um, Hunter may or may not be able to come today, so we'll see about that. The gas tank's like almost empty. We've run most of the gas out of this car. Uh, and if it's not empty, it's about to be empty because I'm gonna empty it. And then we're gonna change that one fuel line uh, into something like just nicer, so something prettier. <laughs> the flares are probably not gonna be done today. Cause I have to do my headlights, so the halos in my headlights broke for some reason, and then all the wiring on the back got like destroyed. So, mm, that's not good. After I paint my bumper, I have this over here that has to go underneath it. It is a aluminum under tray that I got from, I don't know, on Facebook, some company was like selling them. I, I don't know what their name was, I'm sorry, I forget. I'll try to like find it and like put it up here, but I currently forget it at this moment. 
I'm gonna replace this this one up here. This crinkly, crustly, nasty looking John up here. We're gonna we're gonna replace that. But first things first. Thankfully, there's not a lot of gas in here, so we're gonna empty out the gas tank again. <laughs> but one tip I learned, one tip I learned to em to empty out the gas tank is to open up the filler cap so that air. Ah, oh, that had some pressure on it. Can flow back on through. Oh, there it goes. All right, let's hope that can hold all of it. Cause um, not sure what else I have to put gasoline in. Well, as per usual, there's gasoline all over my floor, but <coughs> oh, vapors. Ah, tank's empty. So, so now I'm gonna work on changing out those. Those lines, those hoses, them hoses. The paper's getting in my head. So guys, I got some new line. Got some 3 8 line. The line before was, yeah, it was too thin to go back onto the gas tank. But but the previous owner had taken that piece and just like stretched it and like expanded it. And that's why it was leaking so bad. So now this is the proper size on here, proper size on here, everything's proper size. Hopefully this doesn't leak, but we're gonna find out. I don't know. That's it for the fuel leak. That's awesome that that's fixed. Um, now, I'm going to figure out what to do next. Because I don't know. <laughs> Yo guys, quick update. So it's some time later. I strapped the battery down with a, a ratchet strap. Looks kind of ratchet, I know, but it'll be okay. And I have bled all the brakes using this like fancy little trick that I picked up from Mr. Chris Fix. Using a bottle and a little bit of 3 16 rubber line let all the brakes so brakes are bled batteries tied down I still have to adjust this coilover I have to loosen up this top collar so I can uh, turn this like three times and then I have to fill it with gas which is all down there and then it's good to go it's good to go so I'm not gonna make it any more updates from here on out the next update you see this thing will be on the ground like starting up oh hopefully anyway there's some daylight left, but the sun is rapidly going down. It's like, I think it's just past seven and there's uh there's the sunset. So I got to get this done, like preferably when there's still sunlight out and I don't, and I have other things I have to do after this is done. So I have to go, go get gas, bring it back, then make my ultimate decision as whether or not I'm going to drive this back up to school or not. If this really is not ready, then I got to take this thing, which is really not ready. The bumper's not on and the headlights are out because I have to go inside and open up the headlights and take the headlights with me to school so that I can do the halos while I'm at school and then um, have this thing be done. I mean, well, actually it won't be done. This is going in to be aligned on Wednesday. Remind you, we're leaving for H2O Friday. So <laughs> this is going in to be aligned on Wednesday. The paint for this bumper is coming in on Wednesday, so I'm painting, I'm repainting that bumper Wednesday. And then hopefully in the end by Wednesday, the headlights should be finished and I can put those back in. And then after that, that's really that's pretty much it. I mean, I gotta put the louvers on. I gotta uh, do the Z Bay badge over here. I gotta redo that. I gotta take off the badging in the back. I was gonna put some carbon fiber plating over this, but you know, I might just leave it. I don't know though. I don't know yet. It, it all depends on how much time I have left. I also gotta put uh, rubber lining in the fender over here, and then just clean this freaking thing. It's so dirty. But like, look how bad that tire is, guys. Like, I don't wanna drive on that. I don't want to drive on that. So I'm going to stop wasting time. I'm going to get the rest of this done. Next time you see me, I'll hopefully be sitting in that seat right there. So, battery's connected. I put I put in just enough fuel to hopefully get us started. Um, I don't want to put all that old fuel back in there, so I'm going to go get to the gas station and get some new fuel. All right. It'll take a minute. Easy startup, cool. No. My brakes don't feel right. It has like no fuel in it, so. All right, my brake pedal feels kind of mush. Um, don't really know why. Gonna investigate that, but wow, this car is so much quieter. 
so much quieter. So our exhaust is like a whole two inches off the ground. I'm gonna hope that that doesn't have any adverse effects. I'm gonna see if these brakes actually work, and if they work, we'll go. But they might just need to build pressure. I'm not sure. But they feel really, really spongy, like overly spongy. Kind of crackly, like there's air in the lines, which I bled them, there shouldn't be, but I don't know, maybe I missed something. This thing is so quiet. Holy crap, this is so quiet compared to how it was. Oh my god, like, I can whisper, and you guys can pretty much hear me. Let's see if the brakes work. I'm just gonna go forward and backward. Oh? Pretty much. All right, I think it's around the block time. Again, we have like no gas, so. I mean, if we run out, I have a can in my... Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it just choked out. <laughs> it just choked out. I didn't put enough gas in. All right, it's a good thing I didn't drive that, so I guess I have to go put a lot more gas in, and then we'll drive it. But it started, it ran, the brakes work. Now there's a lot more pressure in there. 